Today we're talking about viewing recent activity throughout pipeline. And we wanted to have this session um, because we get a lot of questions um, now and again about where to find certain information, particularly recent activity. Um, so a lot of times people may need to find it um, to measure productivity, you know, either admins or owners. Sometimes you may need it to audit activity directly uh, for whatever reason, maybe someone's a new agent, maybe for whatever reason, you just need to, again, monitor that their activity. Uh, but most commonly, you really just need to know what's recently happened in certain areas of pipeline to because it drives the work that you'll do, right? It's your kicking off point of what needs to get done. So we'll dive into all the different areas that you can explore and find that recent activity today. Alrighty, so let's dive over to pipeline. And the first area, I wanted to start pretty broad. First area I'm going to cover um, is pretty general. So I'm gonna head over to our reports here. And when you run, and this needs to be run by the master admin, but when you run the usage by agent report, that's gonna give you a nice broad view of activity. Um, and I've already run one that I'm gonna show you here uh, for, I think I ran it for a year period. You've got some date ranges here that you can run the report. Um, and in the near future, we're also going to be adding the ability to, add, ability to search on custom date ranges. So you can look for activity that happened yesterday or the past week, et cetera. Uh, for now, you've got these date ranges though. And the report looks like this. So you can monitor um, for any particular user in the system. You can monitor how many docs they've uploaded, how many docs they've reviewed, um, how many transactions they've created, how many times they've sent docs to their mail drop address, their unique mail drop address, um, addresses, because it could be multiple transactions, um, how many times they've logged in during that period. And if you're just starting out, you can see whether they've logged in at all. If they've still got a temp password, they haven't logged in yet. Um, in which case you've got the ability, if you hop over to manage users, um, to send welcome messages to anyone who hasn't logged in yet. Okay, so that report gives you that level of detail so you can go and um, deal with it however you need to. Alrighty, so that's the first broad area. Second area I wanted to cover, it starts relating to uploaded docs. I'm going to approach this from two different workflows. Um, depending on what your how your office's workflow um, progresses. The first workflow I wanted to cover is when you've got agents that add docs directly to the transactions, right? In those cases, when, when agents add docs directly to the transactions, you've got two basic ways of being notified or getting a visibility into which docs have been uploaded. The first way, kind of the automated way, is under your personal profile, so your name and then personal profile. You've got the option to receive notifications when agents add docs to a transaction, right? So if you've got this option enabled, whenever an agent adds a doc directly to a transaction, you'll get an email notification, okay? So that's an easy automated way to get that notification or get that visibility into whether agents have added docs to the transactions. The second way, also pretty easy, but not automated, is if you if your tasks are tied to your docs, in other words, in a lot of cases, tasks will be, you know, upload the uh, key box author authorization doc or um, upload this doc or that doc, right? If that's the case, you can head over to your tasks page. And if you've got your agents trained and their workflow is to once they've uploaded a doc to check the task off, over on the left side of the transaction, then their tasks will be agent, che agent checked related to those docs. In which case I can come here to my tasks page, click agent checked to view all those tasks that have been agent checked or checked by agents, and then get a nice clean list of those tasks where the docs have already been uploaded, okay? And then I can click through, let me click on one of these, click through to the transaction to see that task in the context of the rest of the, uh, the transaction including the doc that was uplo uploaded related to it, and then take a look at it, pretending it's that one. Take a look at it, make sure it looks okay, and then check it off. Okay, that's a nice workflow facilitator if you've got your agents adding the docs directly to the transaction. Again, kind of breezed over that at first, but again, once they've uploaded their docs, if they come over to the task that relates to it and check it off, 
then um, then it'll get agent checked, like these little yellow check marks, whenever an agent has checked that box. When I as an admin check it, it checks it all the way off. But when an agent checks it, it just checks it as that yellow bubble. Okay. And an added benefit for them to really help facilitate that is that if you've got your docs matching your task names, in other words, if I've got, I've got one here, I don't have one on this particular transaction, but if I had a listing transaction here, let's change one of these here to listing transaction so you can see how it works or listing agreement rather, right? Um, when the agent uploads that doc, it'll highlight, as it did just there, it'll highlight that matching task for them, kind of triggering them to go ahead and check it off. Once that's agent checked again, you on your tasks page will see that nice clean list of agent checked tasks. Okay. So that is a good uh, visibility point into those um, docs that have the agent has indicated are ready for you to take a look at. Okay. Now another workflow that a lot of offices use uh, where they want the admin to put eyes on the transaction, excuse me, on the document before it gets to the transaction um, is, is to not give agents the assign permission. That way, any, any time a doc, an agent uploads a doc to the system, whether they're uploading it directly to the transaction or sending it in through their mail drop address or, set, or uploading it to unassigned docs, if you don't give them that assign permission, all those instances where they're adding the doc to the system will go to unassigned docs. And then that will give you as an admin the opportunity to go ahead and assign that on through to the transaction. Okay. So in those cases, the way to view that visibility, uh, excuse me, the way to uh, get visibility into those docs that have been added and you need to assign them are three ways. The first is right from our homepage. If you set your um, homepage to have this middle section here for unassigned docs to be expanded, right? And all you really have to do is say show list. And then the system will remember to keep that expanded. If you've got that expanded, you'll be able to see this detail that shows you docs added today, docs added yesterday, docs added within this week. And then you can see them right away and click on through to them. So for in this example, I've got three, um, 14 in the sign docs total, and three of them were added today. So if I click through to there, I'll see those three unassigned docs and be able to sort of jump off from that point. Okay. Also, if I were just on unassigned docs directly, let's head back to our um, homepage just so that you can see that you can click this green 14 unassigned documents button here to go see all of the unassigned docs, right? As well as obviously click the header, the, uh, the, um, the menu item here. But um, if I'm looking at all unassigned docs, I can sort them. I can sort by added on here by clicking this header here or by, of course, selecting from my sort drop down, sorting by added on, right? And it'll sort um, my added on docs by that date. I've just got a few here, so that's not as big of a deal. But if I've got a really long list, I can see those that were added more recently at the top there. Okay. So that's a good way to, again, see which items were added most recently. And then if I wanted to really dive deeply, I could come over here to my assignment history. And that's going to show me docs that were assigned to transactions in the past 60 days, right? So I can see exactly what transaction they were assigned to, who assigned them, and on what date. Okay. So that's your visibility into uploaded document activity. Next, I want to dive or head over to activity based on tasks. So I kind of already went over this when we went over the uploaded doc activity when we were talking about the agent check tasks, but that ability to view only agent check tasks is a huge driver to help you identify not just uh, tasks that, that are related to docs, but tasks that have been agent checked in general. So tasks where agents have said, I'm done, I'm ready for you to take a look at this, um, and they've agent checked it so that you can do so, okay? So again, I've clicked agent checked to view all of my agent checked tasks. I can click on through to the transaction, see them in the context of the rest of the transaction, 
and then um, do whatever I need to do with those tasks where the agent have said, has said that they're completed. If I'm fine with them being completed, I agree with them, I've checked a, a doc or um, whatever uh, information outside of the system that I need to check, I can check it off. Um, if I don't agree that it's completed, I can un-agent check it. You see, if I hover over it, it turns to a red X. I can un-agent check it. And in that case, I'd likely send a note to the agent to let them know why I've done so. Okay. So great visibility there to really just drive exactly what you need to do based on that recent activity, that recent agent checked activity. Okay. And the last major area, saving the best for last here that I wanted to dive into that um, you, where you can view recent activity is related to the transactions. So identifying transaction, recent transaction activity. So I'm gonna start over here on the homepage, which is usually where you start. Um, you can't see it on my screen here because I'm logged in specially, but whenever you log in, you'll see, you'll see on the left-hand side, a section called recently viewed, right? So right away, when you log in, um, one of the, the, the most efficient ways of identifying where you need to go next based on re recent activity is uh, transactions that you've viewed recently. More likely than not, you're going to end up going into that transaction multiple times um, in a short, uh, short period. So having them over on your left easily accessible can be really helpful. So your recent activity is often a place you'll look to just to get back to a transaction that you're working on currently. Okay. So that's the first area. Um, second area, we're going to head on over to our transactions page. And very similarly, I've got that same recently viewed menu over on the left, which again, I can't see because I'm logged in specially. But I've also got a recently updated and recently created section. So I can easily see what re activity has happened recently. You're not typically using these sections to identify any audit or productivity necessarily. But again, as a jumping off point for, for activity that you've recently done and will likely be into again, as far as the same transaction. Okay. Um, so those are really useful for that. Um, next, up at the top, um, and this whole page um, is really the most critical page throughout pipeline because you can do so much. There's so much filtering. Um, it's where you start off to get to your transactions, etc. So we did search it. Our webinar last week was about searching. Um, this is related to that, but again, just a super powerful area for both finding what you need, but um, in this case that we're talking about finding that recent activity. So here, um, the search is certainly powerful and we'll, we'll talk about that in a moment, but sort is hugely powerful in this case because you're, again, you're trying to find that recent activity. So sorting to float that information to the top can be really beneficial. So let's hold down on our sort um, um, tab here so that we can see the different options we've got. Three in particular help you view that recent activity, added on transactions that were added on a certain date, transactions updated on a certain date, and transactions whose status was changed on a certain date. So if I want to find, for example, all of the transactions added in the past week, I can say sort by um, added on, I'm sorry, added in general and then sorted, I can sort by added on and then easily see, you know, these three were added, that's not the case, but for example, these three were added in the past week or the past month or what have, what have you, right? So I can see that activity in sort order. And notice as soon as I sorted, it displayed the column that I sorted on over to the right, right? Because by default, when I hit transactions and come here, it's typically the close date, the most common thing that you wanna see. But once you sort by a particular item, it's going to include that date so that you um, can view that, okay? Same for updated on, maybe I want to view transactions that were updated on certain dates and I can see those in that date order. And I can reverse this by clicking the little arrow here if I wanted to see it in reverse order, okay? So helpful there. Um, an added bonus also is for the status change, Sean. When I combine that with the status itself, I can, for example, let's say I wanted to see, um, actually let me do the sort afterwards. If I wanted to see all of the transactions that changed to listed and are currently listed, um, I can filter based on status equals listed, then I get all of my listed transactions and then sort those listed transactions based on status changed on. And that'll show me 
all the transactions um, that are enlisted and when it changed to listed. So here I can see um, all the transactions that changed um, December 9th to listed. There's just the one there, et cetera. Okay. Now, if I wanted to um, take it a step further and go into searching, so I'm really filtering and whittling down this list, so I'm only seeing items that fit that criteria that are within a certain period, I can search by those date ranges. So here, if I wanted to um, search by, let me take out the listed here and search for transactions that were added on, say, um, this past week or this week, okay? Oh, no, let's do this month. Actually, let's do last year just to be sure. Okay, so I can get all those transactions that were added on um, that year. And if I wanted to see when they were added, of course I can sort and it'll show me in that date order. Um, if I wanted to view, um, let's get rid of that date there and view transactions updated, let's say today, right? And then that gives me a clear window into, again, recent activity that's happened. Um, so, and then lastly, for let me remove the state where the status was changed. And I think I'm gonna say last year for this one also, just to make sure we get some good data, right? And then I can sort that if I need to. Um, but for you, for your accounts where there's a lot more activity going on, those uh, today's and last week, this week, et cetera, ranges are going to be a lot more useful because again, it's showing that recent activity. Last year, <laughs> this year, et cetera, is not going to be quite as useful. Okay. Um, in addition to this, uh, the being able to search on those same items we were sorting on, you've also got an additional search option here to search for email received. Right? If you want to see all transactions where an email was received within a certain period, and again, I'm going to do a longer date range to make sure I get some data here. Um, and then that'll show you transactions that had the uh, had an email received within that period. Okay. And so again, just want to give you a glimpse into those areas where you can identify that activity that has happened recently, hopefully to help you facilitate your workflow, see what needs to be done first, et cetera. Um, and I don't mean to uh, disregard the rest of the information that's on the dashboard here, because this is often a very useful kicking off point for what needs to be done. But typically with the exception of this area here, Typically, much of this information is more so related to um, information that's about to close, <laughs> which is typically your most urgent information. So tasks due today on um, transactions that are about to close, transactions closing, unreviewed documents. Um, and when those are about to close, these little red dates here. So again, super useful for jumping off point from your, from your homepage. But um, recent activity-wise, the areas that we've covered today will really help you in